Former That 70s Show actor Danny Masterson was convicted on two counts of sexual assault on May 31st, 2023. Hollywood convicted of rape. Danny Masterson, who starred on That 70s Show, was just found guilty on two counts of forcible rape uh, involving two different women. Jurors were deadlocked on a third count. After a lengthy criminal proceeding that would see three women accuse him of taking advantage of them from the confines of his former Los Angeles home. This ended a years long battle that lasted two trials. Back in 2022, the jurors found themselves hung on all counts against Masterson, with most leaning towards an acquittal. But prosecutors sought a retrial, and in their second attempt, they focused on not only the drugs Danny used the women, but how he isolated them at his home to make them feel more vulnerable. Yes, sir. We go over the top three moments from week one of actor Danny Masterson's rape trial. Journalist Tony Ortega comes back on to explain it all. After a week of deliberations, the jurors returned to convict Danny had assaulted two of the three women, while being hung on the third count stemming from allegations made by Chrissy B, Masterson's former longtime girlfriend. As you might imagine, the formerly popular actor hasn't appeared on TV for quite a while, and it's been rumored that he's been hiding out in the semi-remote town of Santa Ynez with his wife, actress Bijou Phillips, by his side. Now Masterson is facing potentially as many as 30 years behind bars, and he's due back in court at the beginning of August to learn his sentencing. Needless to say, this is one demoralizing story made all the more unusual because of how Danny used his own home to shield himself while perpetrating some awful crimes. If you want to hear more about what happened behind Danny Masterson's walls, then keep watching. But I'll warn you, this story isn't for the faint of heart. Danny picked up his longtime Los Angeles home back in July 1998 for just 500 $160,000. Boasting a Spanish design with amazing views, vintage craftsmanship, and a whole bunch of character. From its dramatic front door to its marble and goldly fireplace, this place was an architectural lender. Danny would spend much of the next decade calling this place home, taking full advantage of the property's master suite with a retractable projection screen, large kitchen, as well as its multi-terrace yard with a pool and jacuzzi, turning the whole estate into something of a social hub. But that's not all he turned it into. According to a tipster who once spoke with Herb Los Angeles back in 2007, Danny's house had a few other notable details as well. For one, nearly 25% of the art in the home was said to be drawings, photos, or sketches of himself. But the strangest and creepiest extra he had installed were 17 interior cameras, planted club style, and smoked glass orbs that monitored every room of his home. Danny could even watch the footage from the control grid in his master closet. So is it any wonder that according to his accusers, this became the scene of all three crimes he's now been found guilty of? Danny's first accuser claims that she went to his house to pick up a pair of keys from him sometime around April 2003. When she got there, she saw Danny was entertaining guests and decided to join in on the fun with some mutual friends. But about 20 minutes after she received a mixed drink from Masterson, her vision became blurry and the actor pushed her into the jacuzzi. Afterwards, Danny brought the woman upstairs and proceeded to assault her by washing her off in the shower and then putting her in his bed in the master suite. At that point, she was too weak to fight him off and he threatened her with a gun after she tried to pull away. Danny's second accuser claimed that she was also drugged and then assaulted by the actor in November 2001, five years into their relationship together. After angering Danny by yanking hard on his hair in an attempt to get him to leave her alone, a month later he attacked her while she was asleep in bed and a able to defend herself. The third accuser, who would speak at Danny's trial, told a strikingly similar story. One night, Danny demanded that she come over to his house. When she arrived, he told her to remove her clothes and not wanting any possible violence to take place in retaliation, she listened. Afterwards, she was afraid to go to the authorities due to her membership in the Church of Scientology, the same faith that Danny's also part of. The last of these incidents took place in 2003. Four years later, Danny would list this property for $1.59 million before eventually finding a buyer. Afterwards, Danny would distance himself from the scene of his former crimes by moving into a new home in the Hollywood Hills. Believe it or not, but in a strange twist of fate, the new home Danny Masterson moved into had nearly as shady a reputation 
Kardashian as the one he left. That's because Danny's new estate was previously owned by none other than Chuck Berry. Originally constructed in Los Angeles' quiet Bronson Canyon neighborhood back in 1923, Chuck Berry lived in this house for years, throughout both the 80s and the 90s, before a series of sexual harassment charges and assault allegations would hit the musical superstar. These eventually led him to selling the property in 2000 for only $570,000. Seven years later, the property was bought by Danny Masterson and his wife Bijou Phillips for much more than that, $3 million to be exact. Secured behind spiked gates and high hedges, not to mention some equally dense greenery, Masterson sure likes his privacy, huh? Anyways, this circular estate spans two thirds of an acre. The property boasts a sprawling four bedroom, three bathroom Spanish revival style main house with close to 4,600 square feet. It might have been built a hundred years ago, but to this day, the home still maintains much of its original architectural details, including a colonnaded front porch, a carved wood front door set into a pointed archway, and well-preserved woodwork, antique fireplaces, as well as semicircular windows. Upstairs, the guest bedrooms are ample in size, while the primary suite includes a private sitting and dressing room as well as a sun-flooded bedroom with an updated vintage-style bath and access to a gigantic terrace. Downstairs, each room flows from one living or entertainment space into another. For instance, the living room with its carved stone fireplace also features coffered ceilings, while the formal dining room is surrounded by glass doors and links to the gray Eden kitchen by way of a butler's pantry. Outdoors, lush landscaping surrounds serene gardens as well as a swimming pool and a tennis courts. There's also a separate gated driveway that divides the main house from the detached garage that's been converted into a studio style guest apartment with kitchenette, bath, and a soundproof two room recording studio. Pretty gorgeous, right? Well, once the accusations against Danny were brought to light, he'd lose an unrelated lawsuit against his mortgage holders, which left him on the hook for nearly $2 million owed on this property. That forced him to list the home for $7 million. Property was later taken off the market before being sold in 2021 for $6.2 million. Given Danny's lack of film and TV appearances over these past few years, not to mention his wife's too, it seems that likely whatever profit they made off the sale will have to last them a while. But with Danny's no doubt expensive legal fees now coming due, how much Bijou will be left with once Masterson is officially serving his sentence is anyone's guess. Usually these house tours are pretty lighthearted, but there was just no way I was gonna be able to tell you this story without taking it as seriously as it deserves. I have no idea what's gonna happen to Danny Masterson now, but by all accounts, whatever it is, he'll deserve it. And his days of living in the lap of Hollywood luxury are clearly over. Thanks for watching today's tour and before you head off, consider answering the following question. Knowing what you do about Danny, will you ever go back and watch old episodes of That 70s Show now? Let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure you never miss a video. My name's Kara. If you'd like to check out more celebrity homes before you're done, then stay tuned to our look inside the properties of Laura Preppen. Bye. Music legend Tina Turner recently passed away in her home near Zurich, Switzerland, where she had lived for almost 30 years, a place that she had made her sanctuary. Her property was more specifically located in the town of Kushnat, where Tina was a valued member of the community, and the star revealed in her 2021 documentary Tina that she spent the last phase of her life in private alongside her husband, Erwin Bach. Tina Turner passed away at the age of 83 on May 24th, 2023, following a long, unspecified illness. In what may have been her final public words, Tina told The Guardian about how she hoped the world would remember her. She responded to this question saying, as the queen of rock and roll, as a woman who showed other women that it's okay to strive for success on their own terms. And when she was asked about what frightens her about getting older, she replied, nothing. This is life's full adventure and I embrace and accept every day with what it brings. After Tina's passing, tributes were laid outside the iron gate of her massive mansion with 
with notes from fans reading things such as you're simply the best and with candles and flowers being piled outside. In her recent documentary, we could see that one of the main properties Tina and Irwin called home in Switzerland was their Chateau Algonquin estate. They moved to the countryside back in the 90s and she said she liked it in Switzerland because everything here runs according to the rules. While Tina reportedly didn't speak German, one of the national languages of the country, her husband would always translate if needed. While Tina Turner was born in Tennessee, she became a citizen of Switzerland in 2013 and renounced her US citizenship after marrying her longtime partner, German-born Erwin Bach, who she'd been with since 1986. When speaking about why she relocated to Europe back in 1997, Tina said, I've left America because my success was in another country and my boyfriend was in another country. Adding that her single private dancer was a smashing success in the UK. The couple had been living in Switzerland for years, but due to strict laws in the country, there are restrictions against foreigners purchasing property. Therefore, Tina and her man had been renting a compound known as Chateau Algonquin for many, many years, an absolutely jaw-dropping home in Zurich, Switzerland. Back when Tina was still with Ike, she always felt like she never had space of her own, and needless to say, she's now making up for it with this home, where she was in total control of her physical surroundings. While the interior of this place is under pretty strict lock and key, reports suggest that this estate looked like a European palace. It has ivy snaking up the walls, gardeners manicuring plentiful shrubs, and a life-size two-legged horse sculpture that's suspended from a domed ceiling inside. I mean, there's reportedly even a room stuffed to the gills with Louis XIV inspired sofas featured alongside a portrait of Tina rendered as an Egyptian queen. If what's been rumored is true, then the Algonquin is simply overflowing with beautiful things inside and out, like pieces of a giant shattered amethyst crystal arranged alongside the in-ground swimming pool and framed photos of Egyptian royalty. If you're wondering about the Egyptian inspired decor, well, Tina sensed that she used to be Egyptian royalty in a former life. When asked in a more recent interview about her favorite parts of this stunning mansion, Tina replied, oh, I don't have a favorite room at all. However, in the course of one's life, one accumulates many objects for which one needs space. I have, for example, some artifacts of Egyptian art. I like to be surrounded by these and other collectibles. It is not at all about whether they are expensive or valuable. The important thing is that I have a personal relationship with each one. I also love the view of Lake Zurich from our garden. I enjoy the peace and quiet. While the couple was happily living in Chateau Algonquin, it was reported that in fall 2021, Tina and Irwin invested in a property of their own, an estate which cost $76 million, no less. This property is a 10 building waterfront estate overlooking Lake Zurich, also in Switzerland, of course. And it's said that tennis star Roger Federer considered buying the property at one point, but I guess Tina beat him to it. Erwin had hinted that he and Tina used the new compound, which spanned over 240,000 square feet of space, as a weekend retreat close to where their main residence is located. This property is a century old historic estate with 10 structures spread over 5.5 acres of land with plenty of private lakefront access. There's also a private pond, stream, swimming pool, and a boat deck on the shore of Lake Zurich. It's no doubt this was Tina's type of place as outdoor space has always been a priority for her. Back in 2000, she told Architectural Digest, I need nature and solitude, they nurture me. My idea of a vacation is reading a book on the terrace while my boyfriend cooks his dinner. The mansion purchase came quite recently, only a month before Tina agreed to sell her vast music catalog to German music company BMG for $50 million. To which Tina said, the protection of my life's work, my musical inheritance is something personal. I am confident that with BMG and Warner Music, my work is in professional and reliable hands. Aside from this retreat, Tina also long enjoyed a vacation home located on the French Riviera, a villa situated in the hills. Tina would often drive herself south from her home in Switzerland to throw lavish parties and celebrations here in France, but she also enjoyed this property because it's in the heart of the wilderness. Tina says she discovered it after renting a little pink house nearby, and when she heard that a villa was up for sale, she jumped at the opportunity. The villa is situated between two mountains and surrounded by woods and wildlife. More recently, the interiors at the French abode were described as a mix of grandeur balanced by informality. She 
told Architectural Digest, when I see something I love, a suite of furniture, a piece of art, I never measure, I never hesitate, I just buy it. Eventually, I'll find a place for it. I've always wanted and needed to transform my surroundings because decorating is my first response to loss and upheaval. Settle, collect, create a private universe. Tina and her designers drew inspiration from all over, including the Greek. Her home boasts Greek and Roman pottery and sculptures that are always on display and other accents throughout. Even the column pool and terraces have canvas shades bordered with a Greek key motif. Elsewhere, Tina had a small private library where she could write and study on an antique card table surrounded by her leather-bound volumes on art, religion, and ancient history. Then we come to the master suite, which was Tina's favorite room in this house and one that she's taken to calling Cleopatra's Barge, which obviously has an Egyptian theme, while the decor complements the amazing views of the sea. Downstairs, you'll find a plush basement spa, a screening room, and a trophy room, while every major space in this multi-level villa opens to a patio or balcony with stunning views over the Riviera. While the world grieves the loss of legend Tina Turner, she will no doubt be remembered forever for the mark she made on the music industry, as well as in the Switzerland community she chose to call home for so many years. That's going to wrap up today's special house.